Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jacob in Between, where we talk about what ha happened before, after, and in between. So let me blend y'alls in to the chats. There you go. Look at you, my little gorgeous, fabulous co-conspirators in the fashion bunker. So today we're going to be talking Christian Dior, the Collection Privé, and all of their fragrances in general. And finally, blessed day, blessed day, Elvia Mage have stepped it up. Well, let's see, because usually they give us a little something, something, and they take away another 5,000 things. So let's not rejoice too much too soon. But geez, Louise, I am I happy that finally Francois de Machy is out the dough. Bye, Francois. He's retiring like 20 years too late. He should have retired 20 years ago. But anyway, uh, and uh, LVMH slash Christian Dior has appointed Francis Kurjan as the artistic director of the perfumes of Maison Dior. Whoop, whoop. I am so excited and happy. I cannot tell you how happy I am. When I heard the news yesterday, and the news just hit yesterday, when the news hit yesterday, I literally, I can't even say it on the tubes, what happened, let's just say I had to change my clothes. <laughs> After I heard the news, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So happy, so, 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 so happy. Because, because my favorite Collection Privé fragrance, Au Noir, okay, this, this, Kurjan made this one, okay? Francis made this one when Hedy Sliman was artistic director for fashion for Dior Homme in the early 2000s. And when the Collection Privé first started, we had uh, Colonne Blanche, Bois d'Argent, and Au Noir, all three masterpieces, okay? But this, he did alone. He was not the perfumer for Dior. He was just hired to do this one piece. Oh, thank you for buying the dad cap, so big. Living for this look on this hat, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna also let you, I'm gonna play here also the, uh, I'm gonna plug in the, Hall the Halloween merch as well. So anyway, that was uh, the t-shirt by the way. Uh, and, uh, but uh, here, here's <laughs> limited edition, you guys, only available until 31st of October. So get your, I'm, I'm wearing the FOMO, by the way, shirt right now. The cult FOMO shirt. So listen. He did Au Noir when he was only 25 years old. He did, in the 90s, Le Mal for Jean-Paul Gaultier. Another masterpiece. Now I'm thinking, he was 25 back then. Huh, a sister has aged, but he looking good for his age. I'ma tell ya, Francis, daddy, you're looking fabulous, darling, fabulous. And I am so excited about what he ha 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 he he did that done, gonna did that do for Dior. Because first of all, Demashi ain't it. Since he came to Dior, things went down for me. Thank you for becoming a member, Maria Knight. Thank you so much, sweetie. It just wasn't it, you guys. It just wasn't it. The machine messed up Dior dreadfully, really. It was one disappointment after the other. He tried to discontinue Onoir. For, for a minute, for a hot minute, Onoir was gone. But then we, the people, kept asking for it. We're like, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. And then they brought it back again, but they secluded Onoir. Because Demashi did not make this perfume. He did not want this perfume out there. So they like put it into that kind of niche of like only some boutiques can have it. Then they took it off of the market. Only you could get it only in France. Only online in France. Only in some boutiques in France. Like this one was literally almost completely gone. Au Noir also had candles. They discontinued the candles last year. I hope they bring them back now. Now imagine Francis Kurjan is back at Dior. This is his baby from the early 2000s. I mean, if I were him, sure, you know, we don't carry any grudges. It's the fashion world after all. You have to act all noble. If you're on that level like he is with so much power and money, 
this doesn't touch you. You don't care. You're going to make another perfume. But I personally, honestly, Francis, listen, I would personally, you take this and you put it on the throne because this one is the king slash queen. It, them, them, they, there, whatever you want to call it, of all the Collection Privée, together with Bois d'Argent. But this one should be sitting on that throne because finally, you know, it's, it's, it's like Cinderella. This perfume is like Cinderella. It was amazing when it came out. Then Demashi arrived. This perfume came out before Demashi. Okay, Demashi started working at Dior in 2006. This perfume came out around 2003, 2004. So, you know what I mean? So the Demashi did not put his paw on this one. So, so he tried to do everything to turn this princess into Cinderella. You know what I mean? So Cinderella has been put to live in the basement of Dior perfumes, you know. And now Cinderella finally got her freaking glass slipper. The glass slipper. The prince slash dad, Francis, is bringing back the glass slipper. Put it on. It's time to put the crown on top of Onoir and call it the king slash queen slash princess slash prince, whatever you want. Of Dior, of Collection Privé for Dior. Honestly, it's about freaking time. Because this thing is a masterpiece. You do, nobody puts baby in a corner. Little quote from Dirty Dancing. If you know, you know. Nobody puts baby in the corner. So, and also, what I'm wondering, because obviously, uh, Francis did the Cologne version of Onoir, right? This is your de Parfum version that was made subsequently. So, I still love it to bits. I love it to bits, but it could be better. I wonder if Francis is now going to take his perfume again. And if the first, uh, that's, uh, listen, listen, no tea, no shade, all tea, all shade. The first, if I were Francis, the first thing I do when I go back to Dior is, uh, hold on, you guys, uh, au noir, yeah, uh, let me sm smell it, hmm. What what did the Machi and his minions do to my formula? Uh-huh. Let me see the new formula. Ah, uh, no. We're going to fix this. Oh, yes. Oh, you best believe. The first thing I would do, tweak this. As I said, I love it to bits. No matter what they do to this perfume, I'm going to love it till the day, I, you know. But the first thing he should do is put his signature back. Come back. It's as perfect as this one is, make it even more perfect. I would do that. I would be like, let me tweak, you know, this would be one reformulation that I would be like all there for. You know, we always say reformulations are terrible. Yeah, well, 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 this is Francis's perfume. If he wants to reformulate it, like, you know, 20 years after he's, it's, it's, it's inception and after it's been through a dozen reformulations without his knowledge, allegedly, yes. Yes, I would. First first and foremost, this is my perfume that was there at Dior before I was at Dior. Of course, I'm going to take this and I'm going to twist it and turn it into the king it is. And then I would move on from there and develop new fragrances. And uh, we do know that, that Francis is, is, is good at, you know, creating perfumes for others. <laughs> Better than for himself. Uh, the Maison Francis Courjan, I mean, you know. I don't own any of those. I don't own any of them because they're just not it for me. But whatever he does for others is amazing. You guys, he also did green tea huh? for Elizabeth Arden. Iconic fragrance too. And you see, it also shows you how versatile he can be. You know, from Le Mal, this kind of bomb, he can go into more subtle territories and create something like green tea. And then he can go into this incredible baroque direction of sophistication, which is Onoir. It tells you everything about the potential that this guy has and connect the dots. Dior, with its heavy hitters like Poison, like Addict, like Fahrenheit. That's where Dior's strength lies. So they are very synthetic perfumes. Francis is known for his synthetic concoction, Le Mal being the most synthetic of them all. This one doesn't smell synthetic. This one is very natural, actually smelling. But if you're going to de develop character fragrances with 
Rigor, Francis is your man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I have the highest hopes, and this is the happiest I've been. You know, when it comes to perfume news, I haven't been this thrilled for perfume news in like years and years and years and years. This is amazing news, you guys. Just saying. Just saying. Rich Mitch says, Kurjan is one of the most naturally talented perfumers. Narciso Rodriguez, for her, Auto Toilet is also his creation. Amazing perfume, says Jesus. Gwen says, what? Francis made green, uh, green tea? I love green tea. Yeah, that's Francis. That's Francis. Debbie says, I hope he's given freedom to create. Now, that's a good point, Debbie. And let me touch base on this point, because it's a very interesting point that you bring that up, Debbie, because here's the twist. And of course, in every fairy tale, they always say magic always comes at a price. Miracles do too. And what's the price of this miracle? Well, guess who bought out Maison Francis Kurjan. I give you a minute. I'll give you a minute. Guess who owns the Maison Francis Kurjan? Guess who owns it? Write it here, right now. Write it here. Somebody, somebody, write it here. Don't Google. <laughs> no cheating. Yes, Jesus. You got it. LVMH bought out Maison Francis Cujan. Who owns Dior? Who owns Dior? LVMH. So, they're making it sound, you know, like, oh, it's all in the family. Super easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. They bought Maison Francis Cujan. They own Dior. So, they just took him from one spot. You know, it was also easier for them. So they own him, okay? They even own his house. Now, he says he's going to have the freedom, blah, blah, blah. Of course, he's going to have partial freedom, you know? But he's very clever. Within whatever freedom they give him, he will wiggle himself through, and I'm sure he's going to deliver masterpieces. Listen. So Demashi started in 2006. Why Dior? Why? And finally decided to... Um, Retire. <sighs> Finally. <laughs> 20 years too late. Um, they say changing of the guard uh, at Dior. And then it says that... Um, so, Maison Francis Courjean was founded, co-founded in 2009 alongside Marc Chaya, right? Then LVMH acquired Maison Francis Courjean in 2017. Okay. Uh, so they call it other oh, move stays within the family. The fact that Francis now, you know, he's going to still keep working for Maison Francis Kurjan, but he's going to be supervising. He's going to be the artistic director of Dior. So, he's, you know. so he will remain the artistic director of his fragrance business while he steers Parfums Christian Dior. Now, they also say that he co- uh, developed Cologne Blanche, but Cologne Blanche is not his perfume, okay? Au Noir is his perfume. Anyway. Um, so he collaborated with people, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is what I wanted to get to. Parfum Christian Dior have a president, okay? The Christian Dior perfumes have a president and chief executive officer called Laurent Kleitmann. Laurent Kleitmann is the person actually who is puppeteering stuff behind the scenes. So we got to keep an eye out for Laurent Kleitmann. So Laurent praised Kurjan as a visionary perfumer and passionate artist who brings his full creative energies, savoir-faire, and exacting professionalism to Dior perfumes, crafting future Dior fragrances that will conquer the world. These are the words of Laurent Kleitmann. So we're, we're seeing an aggressive, an aggressive approach to this uh, hiring uh, Francis Krugjan. We're talking conquering the world, crafting the future, um, exacting professionalism, create full creative energies, savoir-faire. This is aggressive. This is aggressive marketing. As This is as aggressive as it gets, you guys. This is as aggressive as it gets. 
So they want, Francis, to create bombs. They want to go back to the time where poison was created, right? Now, at the same time, credit where credit is due, from a business perspective, Demashi created the world's most famous male perfume. Most sold. Yes, Sauvage. Sauvage is the most sold male perfume as of now. Things might change tomorrow. But now, as much as hated as this fragrance is by so many, it is the most sold male fragrance. So Demashi did deliver in terms of money. That's why LVMH kept him. Us perfume lovers, we have our issues with fragrances like Sauvage. We know, we know. But I respect Sauvage because Demashi did tap into the times we live in because if the masses fell in love with it, it's for a reason. It's because he understood what the masses want. We ain't the masses though. So for us, it's kind of like a meh experience. But I'm just saying, just saying, it is what it is, okay? So they kept them there. Sauvage is the best sold uh male fragrance of, of all times they say allegedly um so what does francis have to say mr kurjan says it is a tremendous honor for me to join parfum christian dior a maison with a richly inspiring history and a resolutely future-facing creative spirit I am delighted to share my vision through my fragrance creations. Working at Maison Dior while continuing to create for my own Maison is a great privilege. I want to sincerely thank Bernard Arnault, the owner of LVMH, for renewing his confidence in me as part of LVMH. And I extend renewing because they already bought Maison Francis Courjan and now they're hiring him for Dior. And I extend my warm thanks to Claude Martinez, Stephanie Medioni, Laurent Kleitman, and Mark Chaya for their support. Hmm? Yeah. What can I say, you guys? I'm super excited. <laughs> Jesus says, the machine took Blue de Chanel and made it even trashier. A factor story says, I just hope they will let Francis create what he wants to and not suffocate his creativity with their sales expectations. Francis knows what sort of snake pit he's in. He knows. He knows exactly what he's entering. So he's not, he ain't no spring chicken. Francis is not a, a little cookie that's been born yesterday. Francis has been around the block a couple of times. He knows exactly what sort of shark tank and snake pit he's in when he works for LVMH Dior. He knows. So he is very well prepared for them to tell him, do this, do that, do it like this, do it like that. But because he is a genius, he will find a way. I am certain of this. I give him that credit and that benefit of the doubt. I'm certain he will find a way within the parameters that are given to him and the limitations that are given to him. He will find a way to tweak the formulas, you know, to, to, to deliver the goods. He will find a way to make even the most bland thing special. If he's inspired, okay, if he's not inspired, then it is what it is. Then we're going to get what we're going to get. But for me, for me, it really all depends on how he deals with Onoir first. Because this is his baby. This is his first Dior baby. This is his legacy. This is where he begins his journey for Dior. Mark my words. Okay? 2003 slash 4, when this one was released, this is Francis's first Dior moment, fully his. So he has to start working from here and building something new. I would not start working from Sauvage to build something. Sauvage did what it had to do. It brought in billions. Well, now we have to mark our territory in a new way. This, Francis, I really hope you watch this video one day 
And because if you're not in line and in, in, in tune with this, you, you get on it. Get on this boat, girl. Get on this train. Because let me tell you, from a Madonna fan to a Madonna fan, because we know, Francis, you love your match. This is your legacy at Dior. You have to start your future at Dior. And may it be a prosperous one. You have to start with Onoir and build from there and evolve from there and create the magic at Dior from here because this is your first stepping stone. Just saying. You know. I'm happy with the decision, says Jack. I'm thrilled. Let the blocks fall where they may, says Jack. Debbie says a worthy mainstream fragrance would really be fantastic. Ah, oh, we're all dreaming for that. Of course, all of these major brands are super scared of delivering something groundbreaking as a mass release fragrance because they want to make money. And the times we live in are so dull and boring. Nobody dares have a character anymore. Nobody dares have an opinion anymore. Unless people are hiding behind invisible avatars on social media and then they kind of hide their identity. Then they spew hate and character as much as they want. But when you're visible and people know who you are, show character then. No, most of them are not gonna. So. I don't have high hopes in general for the perfume world mainstream for now because we're just living in very dull times. But within the parameters given us, I think that Francis will deliver something special. That's all I had to say. Fact of story says, I, I read that uh, he starts working on an idea, a name of fragrance, then on the fragrance itself, not thinking, oh, I want to make a tuberose or I want to make a rose. So he starts from a poetic approach. He has the poem and then he builds the ingredients around the poem. What more can you ask for? I'm living. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Jacob in between for essentially Jacob, because that's where you're going to find this video, obviously, because it's perfume related. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.